Hey everyone, it's Joel. It's New York Computer Help here. We're going to have some people come in and talk about AI, but maybe for the layman, for the regular people, because th there's Microsoft and Apple are going in two different directions that nobody thought they were going to move into. Apple's taking their AI to the cloud and Microsoft's taking their AI straight to the hardware. They changed up this year. And there's people with strong opinions on it. We have one guy who's on one side. We have one guy who's on the other side. I guess I'm the middleman. I'm the layman. Because to be honest with you guys, this whole AI stuff, I try to understand as best as I can. But let's see what we're talking about. We're going to be talking about the Copilot AI program on the Windows, on surfaces and everything like that. And then we're going to talk about Apple intelligence and see what's going on there. It's supposed to come out this month too. And so is Copilot. We're going to be talking about these topics real quick and see what's happening. Where are we going with this? Apple intelligence seems to be Apple's answer to everyone's need for AI. It looks like they are going to be taking Siri and basically implementing AI into it. That way they can seamlessly use the infrastructure they've already put together to be able to help you basically have an assistant that can access any of your data, your apps, contacts, calendars, things like that, um, but also include the intelligence of AI. Now, Apple has boasted that the best way to do this is through a cloud security system. So nothing is going to be on the device apparently, but in the cloud. They said that they're going to be doing some type of two-step security system of pinging multiple clouds to be able to make it so this type of data can't be ever hacked or accessed. Typically, Apple usually boasts about keeping things on the hardware itself in a security sense that way, but they have decided to take uh, a very dramatic change in their approach this time. Um, we don't know too much more about what the extent of how Apple Intelligence is going to work. They haven't released it yet. It'll be out later this month. And then after that, they do have plans to basically put this out in multiple steps over the next 12 months. In the beginning, not even all the countries will have it. And as they slowly roll things out and they work with multiple different governments and get through all the legal necessary steps, they'll be releasing more and more content related to that. All right, guys, I'm so excited about this topic. Thank you, Joel and Matt, for uh, speaking to the AI war, uh, as we call them. And I think for the most part, we have Apple and Microsoft really trying to compete with ChatGPT. And ChatGPT, as we all know, or, or if we don't know, it's really public. So like when you put a search query into it, it's really just grabbing everything from what everybody has searched out there, as well as Google. But it's just really everything as a vast network. And so the way that Apple and Microsoft distinguishing themselves is really just privatizing what they do. So whether it's on a Microsoft Surface or whether it's on an iPhone or a MacBook, they're giving this um, feeling that everything is within your bubble and it's private, which is great. Um, you know, there is some concerns with some, whether snapshots or history of information maybe being leaked or still being on their servers, but that's for maybe another segment. How they differ, and I argue with how they differ in a good way, because you could really use them both side by side, meaning Apple and what they provide. It's really, I look at it like for just like a, an individual consumer. They're really about media. For example, you can set up, uh, if you have a movie you want to create for your um, uh, mother's birthday, uh, you could tell it, hey, Apple Intelligence, can you put together 500 of these photos only with my mother's face as well as my family? and to put in a slideshow and put into iMovie or whatever you're using. And so you could actually set that up in minutes, which is really cool. So you have that, it's media, very media centric. You can edit photos. If there's a photo that's not as bright as you want it to be, it'll edit it. It's an extension or like a graduate of Siri, but it's really honed in on those media centric types of things. And so conversely, when you're looking at Copilot, it's really meant for small to mid-sized businesses, if not enterprises. And where it really shines is if you have a Word document, if you have Excel, you can really just manipulate it. If you have an Excel spreadsheet, 
and you just want to really analyze what's going on with it, you could put a query in there and say, just let me know what have been the best results over the last 10 years of my company or revenues and tell me what's been working the best and it'll just give you the results. Think Jet GPT, however, these are more application-based. To drive the point home more with Copilot, you can work with in Word, Excel, anything Office-related, meeting-wise, and within those applications, instead of typing or editing, just tell what to do. So it's like your robot for apps, just like Apple intelligences. Yeah. And the takeaway is they could complement each other in your lifestyle and what you use, whether it's at home or in the office. And I'm a fan of both of them. It's just what you want and what you want to do that day. Thank you. There you have it. It essentially comes down to what you think security and privacy is. We saw what both companies are trying to make out of AI and everything like that. And we, the regular people, we're stuck in the middle of these wars. It's up to the, us to decide who we're going to go with or what AI you're going to trust. The one that's in the air, that's basically make-believe or the one that's in your computer. The one on the, your computer is looking at you all the time, but the one in the air, you don't know where, where it goes afterwards, but it's a lot to think about. It's a lot to discuss. Hopefully in the comments, we get to discuss this, open up what we think, what we think we're willing to give up in our security for a better quality of life and stuff like that. Yeah. So we're going to open up in the comments and we'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.